If you're watching this video, you probably got a slow iMac or a slow MacBook or a slow Mac Pro even, and you're probably wondering how to speed it up. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to speed it up in the way that if you took it to an Apple store and went to the Genius Bar and how they would fix the Mac for you. I'm going to show you the steps what you need to do. So stay tuned and let's begin. So first things first, I'd recommend closing down all tabs or windows or apps and everything like that before you begin. The other thing I'd also recommend is make sure you're on the latest Mac OS that you can possibly be on and also make sure you've done a system update to update any apps or anything like that what's included in that. What I've got here, I've got a Mac Pro what is running Mojave. This is 2019 and at the moment Mojave is out and is the latest Mac OS operating system. So I am basically making this video to show you how to clean up the latest OS what is available in 2019. What I'd also recommend you guys to do before continuing on with anything what I'm going to show you here is make sure you do a full backup. I'd recommend using Time Machine because Time Machine is really really good. All you need to do with that is just plug in an external hard drive, do a backup, it might take a couple of hours if um, you've got a lot of files to um, back up, but it's totally worth it just in case if anything goes wrong. But hopefully it shouldn't do that. So first things first, what we want to do is go to the Apple logo up here, click on about this Mac. And as you can see, I'm running on a Mac Pro. I want to go to storage here. Because I've got a Mac Pro, I've got a lot of hard drive storage bays inside my Mac Pro. But the main drive we're going to look at is this primary one at the top here, what is a solid state drive. I have partitioned this drive out, and that is why down below here you can see something that says Untitled. But this contains my Windows partition, what I run on this Mac Pro as well, but we're going to ignore that for now. What we're going to look at is we're going to look at this part of the bay here. What you can see here is I've got a lot of documents, I've got some apps, and I've also got the system files. But what is hidden is this Manage button here. If we click on this, you get a brand new menu that comes up. And what you can do, as you can see, is you can store stuff in iCloud if you've got an iCloud subscription. You can also optimize storage on your iTunes, which is really, really useful if you've got loads of movies downloaded or TV programs or, or even music or films or anything like that. And some of that you can actually just stream and just delete actually off your Mac hard drive. You can also turn on empty trash automatically, so anything that is in your trash can down here, and after 30 days, it will just get deleted. Personally, I wouldn't do that, because just in case you put something in there, then come back to it a month later and realize it's disappeared. The other thing you can also do is click on this Reduce Clutter uh, Review Files button. So I'm going to click on that. And as you can see here, it's jumped straight to the document section from the recommendations there. So I go to it and it can tell me what files I have, what is taking up a lot of space. I've got my YouTube library on here at the moment and this is where I'm making all my YouTube videos. So I don't really want to delete that, to be honest. But for example, I've got a Lego Harry Potter castle video that I created. I don't really want to get rid of that. And I've also got some of my magazine subscriptions as well. These magazine subscriptions that I've got, I've got a digital format and I can always re-download them again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of them here and then to make a bit more space, it's only 81 megabytes, I'm going to click delete. And then by clicking on delete, it will completely permanently delete it. So doing that, it is gone and I've saved a bit of space. At the same time as well, I'd recommend going through all of these different bits and pieces here. You've got your iCloud drive, you've got iOS files. So I've got a backup here of an old iPhone 3G that I've got. And again, I don't really need to use this because I don't really use an iPhone 3G, even though I did plug it in the other day just to see what it was doing, but I don't use it at all. So I can click delete and that can go. And then the same with iTunes, if you've got lots of music and if you've set up mails or messages, your iMessages, they're also stored on your Mac, so make sure you delete them. And if I go to music creations here, I've got GarageBand on my actual Mac Pro, but I don't really use it. I'm afraid I'm more of a video man, that's why you're watching this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the GarageBand sound library, because I can always re-download it if I needed to. So I'm going to click that, and there we go, it's gone. 
Same with photos. I keep most of my photos on Google Cloud Storage, funny enough, because it's free and unlimited. But we'll get to that in another video someday. But there are some photos actually still stored in here. But you get the idea. You can make your way through this and delete a load of different uh, files that you're not using anymore. And the Mac will tell you which ones are probably the biggest as well to get rid of, just like what we saw here in the documents. So once we're done here, and once you've made your way through all of that, we can close this down. And as you can see, we've got slightly more space, not much more, because I've already had a bit of a declutter already. So let's move on to the next step. So where we want to go next is over here to the spotlight search. And what we're going to type in is activity monitor. There we go, it's come up. We want to go inside that. Now what this can do, it can show you what programs or what apps are running on your Mac right now. So right now at the top there you can see we've got QuickTime Player and we've also got that VT Encoder XPS service. QuickTime Player, funny enough, is what I'm using to the program to record uh, these videos at the moment. And then the VT Encoder is actually the encoder what's actually uh, doing the rendering behind the scenes as it were for this video. What I'm showing you guys right now. So we're going to leave them and they are taking up a bit of speed and power uh, but that's quite normal because we're making a video. But as you can see here we've got loads of other kind of apps that are running right now. We have for example the Windows Server that's we want to keep that because it's part of the actual Windows that will run everything. We've got AdGuard which is my protector for when I go browsing on the internet, Creative Cloud, but what you want to do is go scrolling through and if there's anything on here what looks a bit unusual you can turn it off and basically it will speed up your computer a little bit more. Also at the same time as well we want to go into memory and we want to see what's using up the most memory. Now I do have quite a lot of memory inside this Mac Pro because Mac Pros generally do have a lot of them so I've got 32 gigabytes and as you can see here the memory uses only 8 gigs of that at the moment and then cache files 11.61. I wouldn't worry too much as long as this green bar isn't right up here near the top you're okay but if there is I would suggest getting rid of some applications and deleting that and you can monitor that. At the same time as well we can see the energy, we can see how much wattage or power um, these apps are all using at, this, at the moment and then obviously we've got the disk as well what's being read off the disk don't really need to worry about that and network as well what's using my network to maybe go on the internet or share files with other computers on my network but the main probably the main focus ones to look at are the CPU and memory and have a look which ones that you don't like and uh, basically close them down so this creative cloud right now is running I haven't got anything running in Adobe so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to force quit that and it should stop it. There we go, it's gone completely. And that's giving me a little bit more power back. Now this idle percentage down here, generally what you want is you want it to be running no more than less than say around about 30%. If it's got that or more, if it's got 30% more, you're in good shape. Basically it's showing how much idle space is left of power on your computer. So make sure it's more than 30% I would say at any one time. So let's close that down and let's move on to the next step. Okay then, so the next step after this is we want to go back into the Apple icon up here and we want to press on System Preferences. Once this is open we want to go to Users and Groups and then what we want to do is we want to go to Login Items. As you can see here we have a number of login items and your list will look very very different to mine. So what I want to do is I want to turn off some of these items. So I've got Google Chrome, I don't really want that to come on. I don't even know what this M installer is. So I'm just going to turn that off as well. And by doing this, this stops the programs loading up when your computer first turns on as it were. So from this it will speed up because you're not opening up as many applications. Have a look yourself, turn off anything you don't want, also delete anything you want as well, so you can always press the minus button, and I'm going to get rid of Chrome there. Um, the Android file, transfer agent, I'm going to get rid of as well, and also I'm going to keep AdGuard on because that is protecting my computer. So once everything is deleted out of there, what you don't want running on startup, what you can do is close that down. The next thing what I want you guys to do is to open up Safari. Now you'd be surprised, you know the saying, delete your history, you'd be surprised the amount of people who do not delete their history. So what you want to do is go to there, click clear history, 
and then instead of leaving it on the last hour go to all history click clear history and then that's all gone as you can see all your favorites will still remain but what will go is everything else what I would say is is that I would definitely recommend getting rid of everything but just be warned that some user data for example like if you were going onto Facebook your login you might have to re-log in with your credentials again and your credentials might have been deleted so on to the next step so the next step after this is to click on the finder We'll just close that down. We just wanted that. So we've got the Finder tab at the top here. What we want to do is, is go to Go. And we want to go down to Computer. But what we want to do is on your keyboard, I want you to hold down the Alt or Option, whatever it says there, depending on which country you're in. And you'll see, while I'm hovering over Computer, Library appears just there. So if I let go, it disappears. Hold it again, it appears. What we want to do is click on Library. We can let go of the Alt Option button now on the keyboard. And what we want to do is we want to go into this folder here called Caches. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of caches in here. This is basically where all the data is dumped from your computer. It's all stored in here. For example, this one here, this $C bundle identifier, if you have a look, let's go to the Get Info. On its own, you can see it's 3.5 gigabytes big. So what we want to do is we want to delete everything that is inside here. Now before doing that what I'd recommend you to do is to do a time machine backup. If you haven't done that, do that now before deleting everything out of this folder. So what we're going to do, I'm going to just click on a folder here and a little tip here, if you hold down the command button on your keyboard and then press A, it selects everything. And what we want to do is we just want to simply drag this to the trash can here and it's all in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up the trash can and we're just going to press empty. And we'll click empty trash. And it's deleting everything else of there. Now, if you do get a pop up what's saying that this file is in use, what I'd recommend you guys doing is just restarting your computer and then just doing this step again. So this is by going to the go button and then going holding down the alt option button and then going straight to the cache folder and then going there. As you can see here already, it's starting to rebuild caches because programs in the background are running and they're starting to dump stuff into this folder. But once in a while, what I'd recommend is to delete everything out of this. Now, all your applications or most of your applications, first time you open them again, they might act a little bit strange, but uh, because obviously there isn't any caches, so it's got to remake them. But majority of the time, most apps don't really need to do this. And again, it will free up some space on your Mac and it will also speed it along at the same time. So we will close that down for now. And let's move on to the next step. Next of all, what we want to do is just open up a browser and get a new tab open and what we want to do is we want to type in this website www.malwarebytes.com and what we want to do is we want to go to the free download here and there we go we have downloaded the app there and what we want to do is just open up that app oh. and we'll just click minimize the browser and basically we just want to check this computer for malware now straight away I'm going to tell you that obviously Mac OS doesn't come with a malware detector but people in the Genie Bus would recommend that you check your computer for malware by using a piece of software out there to check it so being that this one is free and we're just going to do just a one-time check because we want to speed up our computer this time we're just going to install the trial this time and we're just going to get this installed once this is all installed I'm just going to move the package to the trash and I'm going to say it's for a personal computer and I'm going to turn on the protection for 14 days and then what you'll get is you'll probably get this extension blocked because it's not an official app 
as it were from Apple and we've downloaded it from the internet so I'm just going to open up the settings here and what we're going to do is we're going to click allow here and then we can close that down and then the activation is done so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick scan and by running the scan it's going to see if there's any threats on my computer when this is done I'll come back to it and there we go scan's been completed now and as you can see I'm all clean so what we can do is close this down and to be honest that is the majority of everything what you can do to your Mac the other thing that I would recommend doing if you're using an older Mac so this is probably most Macs that were or MacBooks, I'd say, from 2012 or older, they'll probably have a spinny drive inside of them. What I'm talking about by spinny drive is if I just click on this picture here, you'll have a hard drive like this inside it. They are slower and they are far slower than using an SSD drive, what you can see here. SSD drives work like a USB pen, as it were, and are far, far faster. Um, with them, I'm talking like 10 times faster, this would speed up your Mac. Um, at the same time as well, a lot of iMacs um, do have these hard drives inside them all the way to around about 2015, um, just as a standard option. Most hard drives from about 2015 in iMacs became Fusion drives, but you could pick just a normal spinny drive in that. What I'd recommend doing is getting an SSD drive for your MacBook or your iMac, um, but with doing that though, you would have to probably wipe your computer clean to do that, and you'd have to reinstall the OS like Mojave, what you have got here. At the same time as well, if you do have an SSD drive and your Mac is running very slow, the next step would be to completely wipe your hard drive and install a fresh copy of Mojave like we have here. And I'll be making another video for that soon. Well guys, that has hopefully sped up your Mac a little bit more quicker and you should also have a little bit more space now as well. Um, if you are still having problems, like I said, I am going to be making another video very, very soon and this is showing you how to put a fresh OS onto your iMac or Mac Mini or MacBook, whatever you have, and um, look out for that video. And to look out for that video, what I recommend doing is subscribing to my channel. Um, I'd really, really appreciate that. And also at the same time as well, if you have enjoyed it, do press like, I will appreciate that as well. And if you are getting any problems or anything with your Mac after cleaning up or anything, please do leave any comments below and I will try my best to help you out. Until the next video guys with some more tips or talking about some older Macs and how cool they really really are, I'll see you soon. Bye!